Welcome to the Healthy Hustling Podcast. My name is Dr. Eric Broadworth, and I am here with Dr. Haley Van Beek. Today, we are going to be talking about a very important topic. We're going to be talking about the myths surrounding fitness and exercise and pregnancy. Dr. Haley is a women's health and pelvic floor specialist. She works here with me at Fuel Health and Wellness, and this is just a really important topic that we see a lot of just myths and misconceptions and things like that surrounding this topic, which is also extremely important for someone who is pregnant and is going through this, that they have their facts straight so that way they can be healthy, the baby can be healthy, all of those things, right? So thanks for hopping on with this, uh, Haley. Anything, is there anything that I miss there with the, your introduction? No, actually. Um... So I was chatting with uh, the, how this even came about is mm-hmm. one, I think you hear this all the time with your clients that you see who are pregnant or are trying to get pregnant. Um, and even probably women after the fact that when the, you're like, okay, how, what was your, you know, their postpartum and you're discussing with them their pregnancy process. And it got me thinking, cause my wife, uh, so Jess, she went to her workout class and she heard someone, uh, so it was a guy saying how he couldn't work out because his wife was uh, pregnant and he didn't want to make her feel bad. So he didn't want to work out, which um, I I think that's a whole, right. Yeah. She wasn't working out because she was pregnant. That's a whole like kind of different uh, side topic on, I guess, why he wouldn't work out. Um, I I have some disagreements with that, uh, but that's not my relationship. Uh, But anyway, so could this woman have worked out? Should she be working out or should she not be working out if she's pregnant? Yeah. So honestly, um, well, I might back up to my, so with my daughter, when I was pregnant with her, um, I remember having a phone call at like 10 weeks or something like that with a nurse. And one of the things on the phone, the nurse said to me is, oh, you, you shouldn't be lifting more than 20 pounds. And like that morning I had done a workout where I was like, I was lifting way more than 20 pounds, um, at here at CrossFit. So um, I think that's a very outdated, um, why did she tell you, why so, did she tell you not to lift more than 20 uh, pounds? First in-person appointment with one of my midwives, I mentioned that because I, I told her my background, what I do and that I, I don't love that that advice is being given to people because someone who isn't educated like myself would take that and just probably stop what they're doing. Um, right. Cause if they're, they're a doctor or a nurse or anybody in that, um, um, profession, they're telling you not to do something, you're probably going to stop because you're, you're thinking fearful. of the baby. Right. Yeah. And it makes you fearful. Um, well, and I, I want to hit on that 20 pounds too. Like that's so oh. unreasonable in the sense of like, I have, so Layla, so my daughter, she's 13 months, she's over 20 pounds. That's so, and you have say. to like lift her and carry her so to then not train your body to be able to do that like i mean there's so many things in your daily life that you're lifting pushing more than 20 pounds groceries can can weigh that much you know um so anyway yeah i i absolutely hated that that statement and i questioned my midwife and she was actually really great about it um which is one reason i really liked that group um and she told me yeah that's outdated Um, the nurse was probably just reading from something we need to like have better, um, system there. So they're aware of it and hopefully, hopefully that's better. Um, but anyways, I, I think, you know, knowing what we know about honestly, the benefits of exercise for anybody is going to bring better mental health, um, right. Better mental, emotional health. You're going to feel better. You're going to sleep better. Um, it's going to help if you've got any pain areas, right. Or, um, injuries that you've been dealing with. There's so many benefits to exercise and those also carry over to pregnancy. Um, like just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you, you and your baby, it's almost like a, a twofold, right. You, um, two, two killed two birds with one stone. You get, I don't know, you've got your baby that you're benefiting when you exercise. 
as well as your own self. Um, and that goes into then having an easier birth, also a um, quicker, I would say an easier recovery postpartum, whether you have a natural birth or you have a C-section. Um, so ultimately exercise is great for pregnancy. I think for the longest time, it's been something that people have told, been told not to do or to stop simply because there's not a ton of research around pregnant women in general with anything. Mm -hmm. They're same with, I would say, um, cancer population. Those two groups of people are very protected, um, just right, because of both circumstances. Um, you can't do a lot of research on them. Yeah. So the research is limited. Right. So typically the um, way to go is just to say, well, don't do it because we don't know. And that's not the case. And um, what we're starting to find too, um, there's, there is more re good research coming out, but. So let's uh, dive into pregnancy and weightlifting okay. um, because you mentioned the 20 pound yeah. lifting limit that you were told at one of your consultations. Now, mm -hmm. is there a limit that women should stick to uh, whether that's pounds or even percentage, like should it be a hundred pounds, 150 pounds, 200 pounds, or, or should it be at a percentage or should there not really be any limit? I mean, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to put a limit on it. I think it's very, what we know more so as we learn more about this, it's very person, it's very individualized, it's very person dependent. If you're somebody who is lifting 100, 200, 300 pounds before you got pregnant, you very well could safely do that when you are pregnant throughout your pregnancy up until giving birth. Um, this is, this is not weightlifting, but I just want to touch on this goes for anything. So if you're a runner um, and you run, you know, 30, 50, however many miles a week, you can still continue to do that um, as long as you feel good, right? That's the, that's the other thing we're keeping in mind. Um, but for instance, I have a client who's 36 weeks pregnant. She runs, I think, five to seven miles a week right now, and she's due in a month So um, and has no issues. So it's very possible to do that and for mom and baby to be safe, whether it's lifting, whether it's running. Um, yeah, whatever you're doing now before you get pregnant, you can continue to do those things. It's just really listening to your body um, is a huge thing. Like you, you really should know, right? When something just doesn't feel right. Um, I mean, that kind of goes for pre-pregnancy too, or even mm -hmm. if you're not right, like, you know, when you, something doesn't feel right or something hurts, maybe if you injure yourself and you need to back, back off. Um, I think with pregnancy, if you tend to be someone who would just push through something, um, I would caution you a little bit more, um, and just pay a little bit more attention to what that was. Um, but honestly, yeah, you can continue to do everything that you were doing before, as long as you are feeling good, you don't have obviously any injuries pop up or any pain concerns. Um, yeah, that's kind of my suggestion and recommendation. A little blurry. Oh, there we go. Uh, so I think that that's great. I had to plug the charger in there, but, um, so if you're watching on video and you're like, why did he get up? Sorry, I had to plug the charger in. Yeah. I, so with that being said, you know, I look at two, <laughs> um, several things. One, when I think of it like that, you know, don't lift a certain amount of weight. Tia Claire Toomey, who is a uh, CrossFit athlete, she's arguably the greatest women's CrossFit athlete of all time. And she was pregnant during the one open, the CrossFit open, and she's doing all of those workouts. And just like crushing it. Now, since she was pregnant, she knew she wasn't going, I don't think she competed at the games that year, obviously. Um, but she still like, she did the workouts and was lifting all of, I believe the prescribed weights and everything like that, doing, you know, squats and cleans and snatches and everything like that. She actually got a lot of heat. On yeah, she did. Her, yeah. Like 
people that don't know what they're talking about that just would ridicule her on comments and stuff like that that she was posting um when uh, yeah I, luckily i think overall i i think it's good though that she did post it because it gets people talking about that and True. hopefully helps to educate some of these um you know women going through pregnancy that they can do this and yeah that she's the fittest woman in the world like that's not everybody so so yeah you shouldn't necessarily so, so if someone is say just starting their fitness journey if they don't have much background should they be should they be exercising like obviously she'd been exercising right so right like her body is pretty example of, of what i was saying is like She's the fittest woman in the world. She pushes her body to the limits every single day. And she continued to do that when she was pregnant and she did it safely. And that was fine. So if someone's just starting, should someone start a fitness routine while they're pregnant? Um, is that safe? I think yes. So knowing all of the benefits of exercising um, during pregnancy for not only you and baby, however, if you are someone who's just beginning to start something new, um, I would say CrossFit might not be like going to CrossFit class might not be the place that you want to exactly start. I think um, starting with walking is a great one to start with. Um, if you if you're not active at all and you don't even walk, um, biking, even some like body weighted exercises. Mm -hmm. um, stuff Thank like you. that maybe yoga like anything that's a little lower level that's not as high of intensity um would be a great place to start it doesn't mean you can't build that a little bit slowly um as you go but you don't want to just jump right into that um if you're not active already yeah i i think that that's uh some really good information um and i hope people are finding this helpful i know i'm finding it helpful uh the way I look at it, and correct me if I'm wrong, is like I would almost look at it too. I, I'd treat those those like women who are pregnant as, um, you know, individuals. Like if they're just starting, anyone who comes to us for a fitness program, if they're just starting, I'm not going to throw them on a heavy back squat right away. You know, at fuel, we're going to assess their movement, see what what is their current level, where are they at, what's their history, like. Were they an athlete before? Did they do they have a background in any weightlifting? Because um, if they do and they move a lot better, then okay, then we can progress them maybe a little quicker. But if not, if if they're very new to fitness, I mean, we might start with like walking, walking and body weight stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I think going back to what you said before, I don't think it's ever too late to start. It's better that you just simply start and get going with fitness and exercise now, because again, I I've never been pregnant. Right. But I would imagine uh, that it is stressful. Um, I know life is stressful. And for me personally, if I don't get my workout in, that's such a big part of simply my mental clarity, my mental health, um, not to mention my physical health. And are, are there any studies, I'm just curious, that you can think of, not to put you on the spot here, but for women who, so women that are pregnant and doing exercise with regards to like, is there, does it improve their blood pressure or any, you know, decrease any risk of say like preeclampsia or any other issues going on? Um, um, I don't, like that? I don't have one that like a specific study that comes to my mind, but I know in some of the courses I've taken, um, I mean, it, what it, what we know is that, yeah, it reduces, um, it does reduce your risk for like tearing, which is a big thing, especially with like, um, first time mom. So if you have flexible muscles, you have strong muscles, um, you should do better during the birthing process. Um, pelvic floor muscle tearing is something that, um, is very common uh, that happens. Um, it can happen um, during any birth, but it's it's really common during the first one. But you do reduce your risk of of tearing if you are active. Um, you reduce your risk. Does of, tearing happen with every like natural birth? Not every, but 
pretty pretty high. So there's Do you know there's the percentage off the top of your head? There's di I don't know the percentage either. Um, and it's I just different, assumed but... it was like pretty much every birth. To so be honest, <laughs> it, I would say pretty darn close. It's a high percentage, but I but as for like the degree, I'm not sure because okay. there's uh, I'm sure it's first degree tearing, which is like right the smallest that you can have. That's pretty much almost every. Um, usually. Sometimes you don't need stitches with that, um, but the degrees go up to four. Um, uh, so anyway, yeah, that's a big one. Um, honestly, when it comes to postpartum recovery, you just, if you're active and you have a good baseline, I mean, think of it like going into any surgery that you have. If you have like pre-PT before you go into that, like total knee surgery, for instance, or you're very active. Um, before you go into said surgery, you usually have a better outcome afterwards. The same thing goes for pregnancy, um, whether you have a natural birth, so trauma, the body, um, or a C-section, you're going to have a, a better recovery. Um, I had a thought when we were talking about weightlifting that I wanted to go back to, um, unless you have something. No, good, there. no, let's. So the one thing about weightlifting, even that I see with people that I work with um, who are pregnant or even not pregnant, um, but people who are very strong can lift very heavy, but they may still have like some leakage issues, for instance. Um, they may suffer from like uh, some pelvic organ prolapse, which essentially is weakening of some of the ligaments and tissues that are supporting your pelvic organs. Um, anyways, with those, those kind of two things, and then with pregnancy, which with pregnancy, we've got right? Baby that's pushing down, kind of giving pressure from the top. And then with lifting, sometimes it exacerbates those and uh, makes worse those other symptoms. Um, and so um, symptoms of like leakage and, and prolapse and pain and just pressure um, down in that pelvic floor area. So um, working with these people, or maybe they don't even have very much symptoms at all, but they're holding their breath and then they're coning or they're getting a little bit of like um, that separation of their abs, which is something else we can, we can kind of go into, um, what, what's that it, called? Diastasis, diastasis recti? recti, yeah, DRA, we can call it for short, but, um, that, that has some, some more research stuff coming out on it too, uh, that we can dive into. But anyways, working with these, these individuals, pressure management becomes extremely important. And so sometimes just working with them, working on their breath control, how they breathe, how they maybe brace when they lift, it can change their symptoms um, completely. So to me, that's something that even if you can lift very heavy, but you start to have issues, maybe it's not pain, but it is leakage or something along those lines, um, we can still significantly change and improve those just by altering and changing how you you breathe and you manage pressure through this system okay yeah um that's super helpful and then uh we mentioned like you know running um obviously mm -hmm. we've talked quite a bit about weightlifting yeah that's one form of exercise there's all there, there's all sorts of forms of exercise when it comes to like cardio you know and running should with pregnancy they be like focusing more on zone two with like a lower heart rate where say you can talk while you while you walk or run um and you're keeping your heart rate low can you run can you really push it and do high intensity interval training or hit training is that all safe um thoughts on that yeah um again if you if you've done high intensity and you you've done hit and you've done or you push yourself um yeah i think that it's very safe and it's fine if you're just starting to run um, that's probably not, I would stay more like zone two or just lower. Maybe you do some walk running. Um, with that all being said too, it is super important that you're not just running, but you are doing some form of strength training. Um, the client I was talking about earlier, she does weight training on the off days that you, she's also running. You're talking the one who's running five to seven miles a day. Yes. Who's and 36 she, weeks pregnant. And is she... That's incredible. 36 weeks pregnant and running five to seven miles a day. And is she um, like, does she do any races like marathon, half marathon, 5Ks? Yeah, she, I guess. She's done a couple of marathons in the past. Um, 
not while she's pregnant, but um, I mean, her goal is to yeah, continue and try to hopefully run up and up until she has the baby and then see what happens. But um, the fact that she's also doing like she's going to the gym and doing strength training, I mean, that goes and again, these these um, this advice or these philosophies, if you want to say they carry over into anyone, whether you're pregnant or not, if you're a runner, you're going to significantly reduce your risk for injury. If you are also doing strength training on your off days, um, I say all the time that running is a single leg activity. Like you're never on two legs at the same time. If you can't do like a single leg squat or a single leg RDL without having significant issues. RDL pain, is Romanian yeah. deadlift for those of you who don't Thank know. You. <laughs> um, then, and you can't balance super well on, on that limb and you're just, you, you got a weaker side. You definitely need to be doing single leg strength training in yep. addition to your running and the same goes when you're pregnant. So, yeah, yeah, I think that that's all super helpful. So, okay. So th this has been really helpful. I think we've helped to address and dispel some of these myths around exercise and pregnancy. So what do you recommend? I, I see a wide variety of things going out there. So if you are pregnant or know someone who's pregnant and they want to be active and exercise and that kind of thing. Should they, should they be seeing like a pelvic floor therapist to, to see them beforehand? Should they be working with a personal trainer? Should they do group classes? Should they work out on their own? Um, I know there's such a wide variability. What is your recommendation just because, and one of the reasons I ask is, there's so much out there with, I feel like yeah, it's over over information and it can be overwhelming and you're told all of these different things yeah. and who should people go to for advice around this? So I, I think, yeah, I mean, I'm a pelvic floor therapist, so I'm going to advocate for that. I think, um, I do think if someone who specializes in pelvic floor is your your best option. Now your your doctor, right, can talk a little bit, but they're not as uh, they're not specialized trained in, in the trained, muscular skeletal. Exactly. And um and really, yeah, the musculoskeletal system, the exercise system, they have to know a lot um of different things. And um so I would say a, a physical therapist, especially one who specializes in pelvic floor, is going to have um the best plan the best idea for you um, and be able to hear what you're going through, what your goals are, what your concerns are. Um, I think a lot of women I see, there's just a lack of confidence in what they can do and they just need someone like myself or someone that they can trust, right? Um, to evaluate them and tell them, yeah, you can do this. You're like, this is safe to do. Mm -hmm. um, or why don't you try it this way instead? and give them some different ideas and options. Um, so I think that can be super helpful, super empowering. Yeah. Um, because I think a lot of people just feel stuck, like, like you said, yeah. because there's way too much out there on social media well, and, and it's confusing. And I, th I think it's important that you talk to the right person if you're in the situation, just because, you know, I, I look at the range of if you go to, say, uh, a personal trainer, right? And some personal trainers specialize in working with they women do. who are pregnant. Yeah. And I would recommend to consult with those ones if you're going to work with one, just because you might have some who don't really, who are afraid to do anything with you because they haven't worked with someone yeah. who's pregnant. And so th they're like, I don't know, I don't want to, you know, mess anything up. And so they're they, they don't push you enough or they, they might even push you away and say, Hey, you shouldn't do this. Um, I would say that that's a bad fit. And then on the other side would be say working with someone or a personal trainer who, you know, you're going to be hitting max lifts. Like they're going to push you like they're pushing anyone. And I don't think, again, depending on where you're at in your stage of pregnancy and your background and everything like that, you, you probably shouldn't be hitting any necessarily max lifts or trying to set any personal records, personal bests during that time. Um, but pushing yourself enough. So there's, you know, there's a spectrum, I would say, on how far to take things. And I think that's why 
speaking with a pelvic floor therapist, having good recommendations on where to go to. Uh, we, we have another gal who works with us. She's not a physical therapist, but she's a women's health, you know, fitness specialist, a women's yeah. fitness specialist who, um, does a, does a great job as well. Say, is some, they don't have to be a physical therapist. I think a personal trainer that is also specialized in pelvic health, pelvic floor, women's health, um, especially one who works with pregnant or postpartum moms, like, you know, um, they're going to be a great fit now when they should, you know, hopefully edu- or not educate, but encourage you to come and see somebody like myself would be if you are having any pain, you're having any leakage problems, you can't help control. Um, you're having any pro like just, just anything that doesn't feel right that they're not quite sure on, like that would be then a definite referral to see like a pelvic floor therapist, mm-hmm. but a pelvic floor therapist, um, can do all of those things as well as help um, somebody like me being in a gym um, and you want to go weightlift, I can, I can go help with that as well. Um, yeah. So. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope everyone listening got some good information on this. I know I did. I know I learned uh, a bit. So thank you for coming on here today. Uh, where can, if someone's listening or watching this, where can they reach you? What's the best way to get a hold of you if they have questions? So um, you can email me. Um, it's just my name, Haley, H-A-Y-L-E-Y at fuelphysicaltherapy.com. Um, I do have an Instagram too, which, ooh, I'd have to look at my handle. I think it's- I think it's Dr. Dr. Haley Van Beek. Dot Haley Van Beek. We will put the we'll put handle in, yeah. uh, um, in the description as well as your email. If you have like a private- you know, question you just want to ask me, those are two ways that you can do so. Um, or if you just want to schedule something um, potentially with me, then you can call like our main yeah. number. So. so you can reach her via phone uh, at 616-757-0932. Yep. So those are all the ways to get a hold of Dr. Haley here, who is again, an expert in women's health and pelvic floor and everything like that. And we are very I would say blessed and grateful to have her on our team. Um, I'm excited to do more of these. Uh, so mm-hmm. we're definitely going to be hitting on some other topics. There's so many topics to to cover when it comes to women's health and pelvic floor. And if you have any questions, suggestions, please let us know. Shoot Dr. Haley an email or DM on Instagram, Facebook, anything like that. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.